Hey folks, this is From My Geology to Unity, a spiritual journey where we let go of ego and our geological doctrine in favor of meaning, purpose, and unity as a whole. So today I just feel like doing an energy reeling, energy reeling, <laughs> energy fit. I'm sure it's an energy feeling. I'm energy reading. Um, I did a um, tarot reading for a friend, and I, I don't know. I just kind of feel like I might as well do it for humanity, you know, just the general reading of the situation. I've got everything set up here already, so I might as well just do it. I've had a short hiatus from um, content, and. Um, but now we're ready to step back into it. So, um, yeah, let's get going, eh? Hmm. I guess I'll do past, present, and future. Or we should start with. And uh, what's this deck? This is the Patch Tarot deck. What I like about this is it's got the regular cards, but it's got a few extras as well. And, um, yeah, it's quite interesting. So, let's get going then. I've got something. I got something. This collective reading of humanity at the moment. Hmm. I was gonna have. Well, this is the first one. Is for past, recent past, I suppose. And I've got two. We've got two here. Now there's other stuff, but I'll put them back into the deck. So what have we got first here? <clears throat> I'll show you. The first we've got is this. Um, so what is this? This is um, the Two of Wands. And it kind of feels like a choice. I suppose a choice between letting go and resisting. And this seems to be a choice that many might be faced with at the moment. There's intense energies, perhaps. Astrologically, from what I hear, we've got a lot of... Um, wait, the word reversal came to my mind, but that wasn't necessarily what I intended. Um, it's a lot of planets kind of... I can't remember the term. They're kind of going not the normal direction. The other, <laughs> I don't know the astrological terms, but basically, the gist of it is I'm not sure how to put it. I, if I knew astro astrology a bit better, I would better say, but. Well, there's still a lot of intense Leo energy, which is good, but there's also, there's, you could say, conflict, maybe on a spiritual level, maybe on. Um, there's potential for conflict, but also for just letting go. And if we let go, we can transcend the conflict within us or in our lives. <sighs> this card is a two of wands, and it definitely represents spiritual choice generally. And let's see what the book booklet says about it. Hmm. 
Oh, right there. Okay. There we are. There we are. Okay, we're going to go. Multiple potentials, no fixed pathway. There are two reactions to this creative light. Oppose its sheer intensity and then to, or to embrace it through realization of its nature. Both are natural, but ultimately the same part, part of the same light. Inspiring, destructive and creative in that destruction is often the first step in the destructive creative process. So it might be, it also involves surrender, an invitation to surrender and the body, the truth, and the light, and the love of creation. So it's kind of like this destruction could be destruction of egoic illusions within us and established or maybe even in the external or it could be outright destruction in the sense of um, doubling down the negativity and that's kind of the choice there's a lot of intense energy but it could help you transmute or you could double down, the choice is yours. Or at least the choice is everyone's, right? It's unified as one energy. If you look at this, it's swirling in two different directions, but it's in the light in the middle, right in the middle, it's this bright light. But there's two different sides of it, but it's ultimately just the same thing, but how do you, which way do you go? It's a bit like the choice of polarity, in a way. But that doesn't mean, oh, you're choosing service of self if you resist. It's more like, for now, if you choose to resist the flow and so forth, you'll get, a, you'll get more opportunities, of course. They give you a little bit of pointers here. They say, Mars and Aries. So Mars and Aries are connected to this, but it's also says linked to Genesis. In Genesis, you get the fall from grace of Lucifer, and, but you also get the creation and you get all Cain and Abel, for example. Abel surrendered to the divine, Cain um, did not, and was more an ego. But it doesn't mean all oh, the evil's going to win. It just means which way are we going to go? Interestingly, there's a wheel as well, the back. So the change of beginning a new cycle, the end of an old cycle, and there's different spokes, maybe to do with the Dharmic wheel of the ups and downs of life and the unity within. So surrender allows it us to be guided if we don't surrender we might not have so much of a good time and it might involve it might involve this cruelty although i have to say this is kind of the recent past actually in a way hmm i am doing a reading of the energy situation at, at the moment that was actually the intent here so yes in a sense it could be the recent past but in other senses it could be the present I know it's a bit ambiguous here, but it's an energy reading of the present. And yet I decided to do past, present, future. So that's a bit ambiguous, but that's okay. In the sense, just here we've got cruelty. We've got these daggers. And it's also, I mean, there's authoritarianism at the moment. Look at this. He's being jabbed by a sword. But you know what I'm referring to, don't you? <laughs> Um, ordered by cruelty, authoritarianism. And the question is, do you recognize that you're being tested and that you can grow and transmute the energies and the catalysts that you're experiencing? Or do you resent it and fight? Well, again, that's up to you. When you receive cruelty, you can act in cruelty. 
an ego, or you can transcend it. And ultimately, things that happen in the external are signs for what's going on inside on some level. So when we project outwards, we're like, those people are to blame for this, that, and the other. And who knows, maybe you are being victimized in some way, maybe not. But if you identify in this way, it's disempowering. Whereas if you view it as a test or an opportunity to grow more to the light, you know, that itself is, um, that could be very good. So it's not necessarily bad. It's kind of like trials being tested and trialed in the situation. And there's the opportunity for growth there and there's choice to be made. But it's not a final choice. There's always more opportunities in the future. So, we've got that. Now, what does this kind of lead to here? What does this lead to? Hmm. What does surrendering lead to in this situation? We've got something. Hmm. Doesn't quite make sense here. Or at least, hmm. I don't think surrendering needs to last. <laughs> I don't think that's what it's saying, but I bet this card keeps coming off. Okay. Interesting. I've also got another card as well. Oh, yeah. The, by the way, the cruelty card was actually a. Uh, nine of swords now something to keep in mind is when it's an even number there's balance when there's a multiple number it might be out of balance a little bit so there's that but ah then keep in mind that we're talking about choices here so while this came up with lust there's also joy right so there's lust down here so there's lust Joy. So it's about two different aspects of love as well. So while, yeah, we've got the negative side of it, and maybe a lot of people are trying to cope through lust or in negative relationships that aren't serving them. But of course, there's always the opportunity for joy. And that might mean leaving a bad relationship or focusing on loving yourself as opposed to finding a sense of love from external. Because obviously, what does lust represent in a way when it's um, out of balance? Because nothing inherently wrong with sexual desires. But what, what it represents when it's out of balance is the idea that Seeking in the external a sense of validation or a sense of love through someone else. Whereas joy is actually loving yourself. So that's kind of the kind of duality, but kind of polarity. It's the choice. It's the choice. So it's more of the same theme, really, but it kind of adds to it. Also, we've got misfortune and fortune, right? So in one sense, we're being tested and you might be going through misfortune, difficult experiences in your life. We're all being tested. We're all getting a lot of catalyst recently, right? In external experiences, in the negative energies that are coming up from within, we might be getting positive synchronicities or negative synchronicities, but it's all ultimately, look at this. Either way, it's all a sphere and it's all one. 
but there's different ways of looking at it and there's different so you could look at certain things as a misfortune or you could look at them as aren't you fortunate that you're getting the catalyst that's pointing to how you can align or transmute or what's the word what's pointing to out what's out of balance in your life or within in your inner life so even what's misfortune so to speak this is actually the wheel of thought wheel of flow wheel of fortune kind of came out off my tongue there so i think it's relevant wheel of flow is what they write here in this deck but essentially it's like it's a reshuffling of the deck in our lives. And because it's that kind of like, I feel like the beginning of a mini cycle, a new mini cycle in our lives. I don't know how long this cycle is. Maybe it's a month. Maybe it's less than that. Maybe it's more than that. I don't know. But basically, it's a reshuffling. And how do we respond and mentally perceive what's going on in our lives? <laughs> um, Fortune or misfortune? Because if it's fortune, if we're surrendering, we may all find, and if we've done the inner work, we may all find things are lining up for us and it's great. Or we might have more inner work to do when we're getting more external catalyst that represents that. Either way, it's actually still fortune. Duality and opposites are ultimately one anyway, right? So fortune, misfortune are all the same. It's one thing, right? It's all like a spectrum. <clears throat> that's what polarity is it's like you get a line or a polarity it's like there's a magnet and the feel goes around it in like not sphere but spheroid sort of auric field shape electromagnetic field sort of thing but there's positive pole and negative pole but it's all one and again there's a choice here in how we mentally perceive it and how we respond to it. And to some extent, even what we experience, because surrender can allow bounty to come to our lives. That's just the word that came into my head. Um, or we can resist, try to force things in our lives or over other people. We might get more negative experiences that way, but all is for the greater good. And I don't mean, hmm, it's all serving you one way or another, whether or not you recognize that, whether or not we recognize that. So that's interesting. So I was wondering, okay, where does this lead? And maybe this situation, the first two cards lead to the second two cards, but in a sense they're, they're the same thing, just um, different aspects of it but I'll tell you what when I was doing this, I had a sense of the word pink um, come to mind and what that relates to is, that was just a rune that was there yeah, the Rose Tarot deck, so that would be interesting let's get some clarity from that Shall we? About the current energies, the current situation. Okay. Of course, Rose to me, the reason why I got this there in the first place is because it kind of resonated with this idea of the high heart, which is kind of like the Rose chakra. It's kind of linked to the heart chakra, but it's a, or part of the heart chakra, but it's, I think, slightly above it. I'm not quite sure about that, but. Anyway, that's why it resonated with me. Anyway, it's got a nice, I don't know, if, you, if you're just listening to this on Spotify or Anchor or something, I mean, you won't be able to see this, but yeah, it's got quite a nice image there. So it seems that even though I originally was going to go, let's go past, present, future, we're not really doing that. It doesn't seem that I'm entirely doing that after all, which is fun. Oh, I've got something already. Already, what's this? That's a two of swords reversed. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, there was something underneath it as well, which is a knight of swords. 
Huh. This is interesting. It's got like, and it's, if you have it inside, it looks like an eye. But it's got like, it's an avoid, it's got the moon and the sun and two keys, two roses upside down and two swords beneath. So there's conflict, but in the negativity that we're experiencing, there are the keys to transmutation and to so much more. Even if there's a lot of negativity going on, a lot of conflict, the light and the dark, the sun and the moon, the plenum came to mind. That's a word that came to mind. Don't know why. And they're crossed over, see? So there's a sort of union here. Union of opposites. But on the outside, it's just like swords crossing and fighting. So again, despite how it's opposite, it's reverse. There's always the opportunity to have it upwards, upwards. A unison of opposites kind of dropping the swords and bridging divides within or external and um and also a crisscrossing of the the 3d and the 5d right the the other side this side and the other side interacting things are going to seem all right now things are a bit funky aren't they it just the energy just feels a bit weird. Now, it could be great, potentially, because, how do I put it? The other side is coming more into our lives, potentially. And this could have a very positive perspective, but it also could have a negative perspective or a negative experience. And it depends fundamentally on, on us. Some people, a lot of people perhaps, might still be in conflict internally and externally. But it's kind of a point where it might be too much. And so I might just be like, decide they have to change or transmute something. Because it's one of these make, make or break sort of things. That's the sense I get. Like, yeah, like, and hidden beneath that card, underneath that card was the Knight of Swords. And I will actually get greater clarity about what that means here. But, Knight of Swords, what does it say here? Hmm. The ideal of the Crusader, the medieval quest for Jerusalem, spiritual journey to the heart of the world, an initiatic conquest of the center. Boundary to the and roots to the sacred center symbolized by the temple and holy city. So, I mean, it says here mischief and pending struggle, combat, enemy, courageous engagement, defense. And what am I getting from this in this context here? So, in one sense, it's the conflict of the crusade against the enemy, right? And given these intense energies, some people might just, it might fall over to conflict. Um, but there's also a sense of chivalry here, a sense of honorableness. Hmm. 
sense that light workers it oh he's got pink on his um on his helmet it's almost like the um like this deck the uh the heart love so again it's like there's a choice right and even here it is um on the horse there's this crisscrossing of these two different colors although green and pink very much represent top in another sense it could be this that choice and the intercrossing of this side and the other side. So again, it has positive and negative connotations and it depends on each, each soul as to what's it's being experienced and what will be experienced. And that comes down to choice of mental perspective, frequency and so forth. But there's definitely an opportunity here Definitely. I mean, I have to admit, it's the same theme so far. I don't want to kind of repeat myself in different iterations necessarily. Okay, I'll go with the patch tower just because I feel like it. Hmm. So there's this. Anything else that I'm missing here, or that I haven't brought clarity on? Hmm. The moon. The moon. Hmm. Well, this is interesting. Have a look at that. You know, I wonder if I put this on HD when I when I was uh, when I set this up. But oh well, the quality of the video. As you know, I can feel that anyway. Don't worry about that. So, uh, yeah, um, got Anubis, and I'm not sure which other god that is. But there's the one of them's holding the ank. I'm not sure if you can see it. So these two hounds or something. And there's just someone with a teddy bear just looking up. And up right up there, over the sea, is the Merkaba, shrouded in light, but in blue. And there are these multicolored wings of the scarab. And it says on top of the card, introspection. So the moon can represent the illusion, maybe a goic illusion, not seeing things clearly. On the other hand, and it's in darkness, but there's an or false light. But there's, I mean, there might be something that a lot of people feel like is the solution to all the problems in this darkness that we're in. All the threats that, or the problem that we have, this big problem that we have at the moment, and that there's a solution that solves that right but there's an illusion there it's not true necessarily oh it's got the spiraling like dna in golden light here as well but either side it's almost like a sense of judgment mm, not judgment in the negative sense but just simply consequence of choice and it's like the way we're coming off the way so it's kind of like okay okay why am i going with this you know, I was saying the crossing over between the other side seeping into this, the, the 3D. And so the spiral of the DNA is like this integration of opposites spiraling round the way. And that leads to the Merkaba with the Ankh symbol in the middle, which is um, it's kind of like a cross, but with a circle on the top, it's like this Egyptian symbol. And the Ankh, not the Ankh, the, um, the Merkaba, which is a triangle up and triangle down, the Jewish star, it's, um, it actually represents unity because there's the upward represents a masculine energy, the downwards represents the feminine energy. And um, together it's unison of opposites or positive and negative, and the unison of that 
because you accept the negative and you love the negative and that's what the positive is about or even face the hounds and that might be suffering in ego so there's potential benefit from the moon here and the moon's a powerful card it's not just like one of these suits it's a more it's like a theme at the moment a strong theme for the whole situation i feel like there potentially benefits for for um spiritually for meditation for channeling or connecting psychically and raising frequency and there's great benefits there potentially but there's also an opportunity for transmuting negativity and and there's certainly there is a rising here of this golden energy which reminds me of the Christ consciousness what whether we experience more illusion more confusion or greater clarity and insight again is up to us individually and collectively and i feel like that's what's going on here hmm any more clarity on this okay i'll get a card from the rose deck and i'll get one from the rider tarot deck which is the classical tarot deck that most people are more aware of Mm, mm. Okay. Don't go too long here. But uh, yeah, I'm already getting a sense of things, and then maybe I'll cast some runes. Oh, what we got here? We got something. The Five of Swords reversed. Well, upwards it would show. This would show a. Um, you know the story of the guy who flew too close to the sun and the wings melted and he felt it was there. So this reversed. Which could either mean that the otherwise negative part is positive or that a negative situation is resisted and made even worse. But... <laughs> If you're going upwards, <laughs> I mean, if you're going towards the sun, that could burn you. If you're going, or it could illuminate you, either way. But if you're going to the earth, that might not be. If you hit the earth, that's not unpleasant either. But this is a situation. So if this guy falls, he falls into the sun. And there's an intense, there's intense energy. And so to me, and also these swords crossing over it, right? This is the positive, there's opportunity for unity of opposites because there's two one way to the other and the sword in the middle. But it also might impel you in fiery energies of the sun. There's a lot of intense energies. And also we started off with Mars and Aries, which are very fiery energies. Uh, we got Mars and Gemini with Kulji, with um, the Nine of Swords. Because the Patch Tarot deck, it does, it, it tells you the um, other associations there. Gemini is balanced, but positive and negative polarities, perhaps. Again, with each of these cards, there's positive and negative adaptations, depending on what you experience, might be your choice. And I, I'm very much getting that sense of. It can go either way, depending on each soul and their choices, their mental choices, not so much their external choices. Because external choices, choices and external realities, so to speak, ultimately are reflections in a simulation that we exist in, because it's all really an inner journey anyway. Fortune, misfortune. Well, I mean, kind of up to you which one it is or which way you interpret it. Because when you interpret something very negative, so to speak, as something to be grateful for, that's very, um, that can be very useful. That's what transmutation is about, potentially. You love and accept what 
the suffering and the negativity, so to speak, and that way you heal it. So, yeah, so... It might hurt to have the illusion burn away. Or if you don't let that happen, it might hurt even more because it is so intense and you might be flailing in pain. It depends, again, on you or each person. But I will get greater clarity here by looking at the book and what it says about it. Obviously, there's I've got different books to tell you what different cards mean. But since I'm using the road deck, Rose deck, I'll see what it says. Eventually, I won't need to do this, but it is useful at this stage for me. Uh, to look at... To look at what it says here. So, okay, five of swords, five of swords. Reversed, which I can just infer. Intuitively, what the reversal means. Well, I mean, upright, it then the diminishing meanings might be defeat, humiliation, mourning, acceptance of limitations, losing the battle. Hmm. Before the vicarious. Also, pride before the fall is a theme here when you go too close to something like that and fall too down. But it's reversed, so interesting. Um So it's not so much, oh, getting too cocky and getting too close to the sun when you're not able to do that and you're overconfident or whatever. It's not quite that. It's more that the sun's shining hard or the intense energy's shining hard on you anyway. That's already the situation. It's not that you are going there and you face pay the consequence. No, it's the very intense energies and you've got to deal with it. And you can accept your limitations. That doesn't mean go into limitation and constriction, but rather accept the situation. The ex right. Surrender to the divine, essentially. Or resist it and try to force your way over it. And, um, does it illuminate you or burn you? That's up to you. So, and if you listen to this, it may well be that it illuminates you based on your choices. Because this is applying to the whole of humanity, potentially. This is, at least that's the intent here. And I'm not trying to predict this or apply this to, this is just more like, what's going on? An attempt at observation, maybe? So, Huh. You know, I was going to use the Rider Tarot deck, but my eyes just fell on the um, Nordic Tarot deck, so I feel like I'm going to do that instead. So one more card, and then runes, right? Okay. I'm going to put this right in the middle, on top of the, the second two cards I got out. Don't know why. But it probably applies to the whole thing. Well, these are big cards. It's all right, shuffling it. Okay, okay. Hmm. Greater clarity about the whole situation. What's going on? What on earth? Okay, I've got something. The Three of Cups. Three of Cups. Okay. Three of Cups. Here we are. But it's reversed. Three of Cups reversed. Mm, normally it'd be like this, and that's like... It looks a bit like water and a bit like 
in the background and a bit like fire. But the thing with the cups is that it's about kind of prana, kind of well, life energy. And it is kind of like fire and water anyway. But the cups are upside down. Why would they be upside down? Perhaps to fill the cup with what serves, what does not serve might need to be poured out. Do people feel drained at the moment? Not sure what they're doing, just a bit like. Ugh. You know, I, I sort of explain it, but it's just sort of like de energized a little bit because it's like, even if you're letting go and it serves as energy flowing out, but then more come flow in. But otherwise, that resistance might be tough to deal with. I'm just kind of getting the vibe of that. But yeah, oh, I lost the page. Okay, there it is, three of cups. I mean, regularly, if it was upright, it would say celebration, fun, joy, happiness. Time to let your hair down, figure out worries. Personally, I've actually taken a step back from my podcast a bit. Um, I felt like important time to reflect. And I have been from the foot up and relaxing a bit. And I honestly, I've been reaping the benefits of that. Um, positive moment of love milestone in relationships that might be the end of it perhaps or a beginning or just things getting better or worse you know it's just a milestone and um, there's potential for romance but also at coming into love in certain terms but also potential for a darker manifestation of that um like hookups, or <clears throat> I'm not sure how to mention this. Um, darker things of a sexual nature, and for some of the uh, yeah, uh, what should I say? Elites? I don't know. Some of them might be. I don't know. I, I'm speculating, but it basically it can go. In, there's different aspects or manifestations of it, but ultimately it's... And also it's reversed. This card's reversed. So this kind of represents a sort of resistance where there is ups and downs, right? And up, in an up with the three, see, it's much more intensity of what's going on, potentially. Okay, it is intense. What I'm saying is, it's kind of like... Hmm, how do I describe this? It could be, on one hand, allowing yourself to relax and let go. Or on the other hand, it could be overwhelmed by not doing that. It could be taking in divine energies as you open yourself up and let room for that. Or it could be inner turmoil as you don't. Or something negative, a negative manifestation of this energy here. Maybe sexual energy. And sexual energy doesn't necessarily mean sex. Because technically speaking, as I understand it, prana or life energy is kind of sexual energy anyway, it's hard to explain. But basically, it could take the form of something of like romance or love, or even just come into love yourself more in a positive way, not a narcissistic way. But it could be in a narcissistic way if it's on the negative side of things. Interesting. Um, yeah, but it's not like necessarily hustle, but more like hmm, like the vibe of a party or I'm not sure how to put it but I think you get the vibe as I've been saying the whole time there's it's a social thing as well potentially but you know what I think I've got that across fairly well and if I haven't oh well okay um 
Verbs. Let's get some verbs here. Ah, well then. Oh, I've got something. Okay. Hmm. This one, P, <clears throat> but it's upside down. I can't remember what this is. There it is. Winjo. Wunyo. That's how you pronounce it. <clears throat> Joy. Bliss peace. You know, that kind of fits that card. But potentially the flip side of that or the reversal of that. Joy or misery. Or covering up your misery with pleasure seeking behavior. Um, and that person who's behavior might be selfish or just self destructive, so to speak. But not necessarily. Again, it depends on how this energy is responded to, right? And in this case, the querent is humanity as a whole right now, but also each individual member of humanity. So yeah. Oh, but it's a long-lasting state of fulfillment that accompanies successful growth and prosperity. So it's kind of like, okay, suppose you were doing it at work, and this is like a bountiful reward, then it's like, oh yes, I feel great. Or it could be not having done that. And then this is like, holy shit, this is awful. Or I've got to do this to cope because I can't bear it. Because suppose you haven't been doing it at work, right? Or it could be a breaking point where like, it's so intense and someone might decide I have to let go because this is too much otherwise it's all how people respond to it but so it's yeah it's joy or the opposite of that if you resist it and the inner child again it links to the inner child um wonder and joy and having fun but potentially not Potentially a wounded, hurt in a child just covering up their pain. Because remember, we all grow up like trying to get our sense of love from parents, right? Because that they're like God to us at first, right? And so we often relate as adults to those experiences and a way those strategies or ways of getting a sense of being of our self-worth or our to be worthy of a parent's love, right? And so in, in our, as adults, we, we interact like that with other people. We follow those same strategies with them, unless we can let it go or transcend it. And let's remember, this is childlike, not childish, but it could be childish if it's not harmonious, potentially. Remember, this P is upside down. So for many people, it might actually be misery, unfortunately. Now, I'm not predicting that, and I'm not trying to put that onto anyone. I'm just simply saying, this seems to be, this is at least what I'm subjectively perceiving here as going on. So that's on the surface, but we've got some things under the surface. So. On its side, we've got this one. I can't remember what it's called. Hmm. Hmm. This video might be slightly, slightly longer than intended, but that's okay. Oh, North Nalpith. That's what that was pronounced. Need. Necessity, constraint, restriction. Now. Some of that with constraint and restriction might just be catalyst. Some of it might just be well being constrained by external forces like authority, say. It might be 
feeling a need to constrain or restrict oneself, whether or not it's there or not. But, and there's a sense of um, the constrained as need fire, but also when one door closes, another opens. So there's opportunity for change when approached properly. So there's suffering inherent in this room. But this can be catalyst, which is used to transcend the situation, hardship, and where you take it back, you realize, okay, there's two doors, which am I going to go through? You take a door and it could be like, wow, this is an improvement. Or it could be like an attempt to control the situation, you go through a door, a negative door, and it gets worse or something. But then there's always another opportunity for opening up and letting go at a later point. So it's just that some people are letting go more right now, and some people are not. And those mental choices in the inner journey have consequences internally and externally because it's linked. And that fire is, it could be, some people have that fire, might be the in a fire, have a need fire, might be a time to control the situation, or it might be the fire of love flaring up as you fuel it with, as you open up, the air flows in or something. <laughs> I don't know. That's what came to me. With the hailstorm, Hakalas is over us, we must find the inner need fire within us to make the situation better if we can, and if not, just wait out until it's over. So yeah, kind of a sense of crisis, and what do you do with that? Okay, so what's this one? Oh, that's the one I just did. Uh, what's this one? It's a nem kind of upside down at first on the side. Um, if I recall correctly, what is this one? This one. Oh, here it Partnership, trust, loyalty, cooperation, erosion, or lack thereof. Again, it's upside down, so for many it might be a lack thereof. But this is in the background. This is not immediately apparent. This might be what's going on underneath the surface. Either what people are hiding behind closed doors or what's just subconsciously in the internally. So, but it does say certainly that with mutual respect, with partnership, um, with a proper relationship or partnership, not dominance, things can be great and things can be really come together and moving forward in a really positive way. But, or it might not, you know, it might be getting quite negative. And also it represents the horse, the partnership between the rider and the horse. And it, is it just like forcing the horse to be really, also the relationship between the soul and the ego. Right? Is it the ego tyrannizing soul or beating yourself up with things? Or is it like a healthy partnership between internal and internal or different aspects of yourself or whatever? What's the relationship you have with yourself? What's the relationship you have with others? The question matters and it's not for me to tell you, right? But asking these questions is a key thing right now. And there are many who may well be asking that. What conclusion they come to, that's up to them. Life is much easier when we become our own best friend rather than our own worst enemy. I mean, yeah, right? Exactly. So, what's this? Oh, upside down is the hail one. And the hail, this one, it basically is basically hardship. But afterwards, that hail can melt and fertilize the crops. So it's basically like catalyst for future growth if you're allowed. So it's not necessarily bad, it's just hardship. And yeah, that seems like what's going on. Oh, we've got a card, not, not a rune on its side here, but it's not upside. Hmm. It's not upside down, it's just kind of on the side. So the energies might not be quite so intense, but it's sideways. So it's kind of like kind of like a reversal or partial energy here. But it's it's actually kind of upwards. 
or maybe partly hidden, but inkwells. Um, a masculine energy into do with fertility, sea, ancestry. Yeah. Well, so, hmm, let me get into this. In one sense, it could be unison of opposites, or even DNA helix, DNA codes, maybe. Um, fertility, so romance, or even uh, sexuality, sensuality, um, perhaps, or even heritage of past bloodlines and ancestral energy, thinking about like that. Also, tapping into your mas the masculine energies. Are these masculine energies being healed? Or are they on a rampage? What does one want to tap into? Or what is one tapping into or experiencing? Could be either. Also, it, it relates to the sense of uh, fate or luck or, or something, but on a family level, so like ancestral energy. As in, challenges that were kind of chosen for one's life because you choose what family you're born into so and these are relevant to one's spiritual journey in many lifetimes and so there's a potential here for growth in the catalyst that one's experiencing or the testing that one's experiencing here but it, it's empowering room um Fertility, growth, that means growing as a person, perhaps. But keep in mind, it's on its side, which means not everyone is, not everyone is um, responding to it for this best way. There might be resistance here, but it happens, it helps with matters of, in magic, it helps with matters of sexual quality and potency. Hmm. And ancestral energies grow and like a yeah i think i've summed it up and that i think is everything i've gone on long enough so this is my this is the reading for collective energies of humanity at the moment so if you resonate it with it um that's great if not maybe it's not for you and that's okay and well um, have a great day or evening. And uh, without further ado, bye for now.